Okay guys, welcome back to my channel if you are new here. Hello, my name is Ailish. It's lovely to meet you and I hope that you're having a wonderful day. So for today's video, I thought it would be a really nice idea to take you on a little walk with me. Let's let's go on a walk together and talk about some things that I wish that I had known at the start of my fitness journey from more of a personal kind of real life experience angle. That being my own experience from starting a fitness journey. My friends, so many friends and family members have also gotten into fitness and my whole life has revolved around fitness now for like 10 years and also from all of the clients that I've worked with their previous experiences with health and fitness the mistakes we've made so that you don't have to. Firstly had to pick up a coffee for the walk as is tradition um, which brings me on to a point that I've just came up with right now on the spot. I do have point one through ten that we're going to discuss. This is going to be point A zero point five. Um, you don't have to drink black coffee to be into fitness for real. You can have sugar in your coffee and it is fine like the world will still go round. I used to think that all you could have was an Americano otherwise you are just wasting your life having calories and coffee why would you put sugar in and why would you put milk in because it tastes nice and you enjoy it and at the end of the day it can still fit into a deficit or into a healthy balanced diet like you don't have to restrict the things that taste lovely and wonderful to conclude this point there is a lot of nuance in what is healthy because if you restrict out things that you genuinely enjoy and that you genuinely love and you miss these foods but they're a complete no-no and there's no way that you can possibly balance them in your diet that's going to make you unhappy in the long run and then make your diet likely unsustainable long term too actually a little bit more difficult to film outside than i thought it would be so please bear with <laughs> mentally i was like mm, it'll be so lovely i'll add a little bit of dynamic motion to the video and like i'm just squinting and i think it's a bit too windy as well number one is that your fitness goals need to have a purpose otherwise you'll kind of just flail about not knowing what you're doing get nowhere fast and be really upset with yourself i'll do a couple of examples so if you want to get into running if you've tried running a bunch of times and you just get nowhere fast one thing you could do is just sign up to a park run or a fun charity kind of 5k run no pressure no big deal maybe for three months time or six months time or put it in the future and give yourself that goal to work towards and that's going to help you a lot with having purpose for your training and then in terms of actually setting out the plans in motion to achieve this purpose i recommend smart goals but i don't have to go on about these to you you can just google them specific measurable achievable realistic and within a time frame and another couple of important mentions here are the power of habit by charles duhigg and atomic habits by james clear both very good books on how you can implement habit building into getting these things in place you need to achieve this purpose with your goal such as getting into running or getting into fitness and we're coming across another technical issue that my eyes are leaking as well <laughs> so the second thing that i wish that i knew before getting into my fitness journey is that i should have been more realistic with time frames i talked about time frames a little bit in that first point with regard to the race for example so sign yourself up in a couple months down the line to give yourself a bit more purpose for the goal you're trying to achieve but don't be crazy with your timelines be realistic with them so don't sign up to do a 5k tomorrow if you've got no training setting yourself unrealistic time frames can be really really demotivating and make you feel so crappy when you don't achieve your results in that desired time frame because a lot of the time you just don't give yourself enough time to achieve those goals you need a few weeks to figure out where you're going wrong you need a few weeks to build up to all the habits that you want to be achieving to reach your goals and then you need a few more weeks to start seeing progress be realistic with the time frame you set yourself now on to the third thing and that is tracking your dietary intake is not disorderly it's not disorderly in the slightest however it really 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 can be <laughs> and it usually is because it's typically the first port of call that somebody will go to when they want to change their appearance first thing is calories 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 we need to cut them we need to restrict we need to go super low because that's how i'm going to reach my goals with absolutely no regard for the quality of their diet the variety of their diet and whether they are enjoying the foods that they're eating for example the whole black coffee thing from earlier not enjoyable i'm not going to stick to it for very long 
So my recommendation to you would be to look at your overall dietary intake and your overall dietary quality before considering restricting calories because that's gonna be so much better for your health, mental and physical. <laughs> and you are very much more likely to actually adhere to your calorie deficit when you have a more balanced, varied diet. I'm actually really out of breath walking and talking, so I don't know what this is for me as somebody in the fitness industry. We're at point number four, everybody, and that is just because something says it's high protein on the label does not mean it's healthy, doesn't actually mean it's high protein, and doesn't mean it's very good for you. This actually links in really well with the previous point, so often you'll go into fitness, zero calorie everything, high protein everything, super low calorie diet, not long-term sustainable at all. A lot of the high protein products are ultra high processed. So just as processed as a chocolate bar or any other kind of processed food. And it's kind of looked at, it's got this health halo around it because it says protein. But yeah, just because it says it's high protein doesn't mean it's high protein. Check the label and check the number of grams of protein. And don't just think that it's automatically healthy because it says it's got protein in it because it could be ultra high processed. Now, not that there's anything wrong with having ultra high processed food in your diet, but it should be kept to a minimum. But don't label it differently to other ultra high processed foods either. We are halfway, we're at number five. And number five is um, a lot of transformations online are incredibly fake. A lot of Instagram transformations are so freaking fake, they're either edited or the poses are done differently, the breathing out at the start, the posing at the end. Um, a lot of things online are fake. And I can vouch for this myself because I used to edit my photos all the way back in 2018, 2019. I was so tiny, I was so small. Um, and I still edited myself to look smaller. Um, and for that, I have a really good eye for people <laughs> editing photos. And it's prevalent, it's always been prevalent. So a lot of people do edit their transformations online. So it's something to be aware of. This quickly leads me into point six, which is don't compare yourself to anybody else at all in the world. Don't compare your journey to theirs because it could be edited and fake. Secondly, they could have went through severely restrictive processes to get their results um, and that isn't long-term healthy. You might see amazing results between week one to six or week one to 12, these incredible, huge, massive transformations. But are you seeing what that person looks like a year down the line? their mental health a year down the line, their physical progress a year down the line. Um, when starting your journey, don't look at somebody's progress picture and say, I want that in the next 12 weeks because they have so many different factors to you. They might have more free time. They might have more money. They might have a friendship group that are all into fitness. They might not have children, they might have children. Everybody has totally different factors for achieving their goals and being able to reach their goals. So your journey is yours. Please don't compare to anyone else's because of lifestyle and environmental factors. And a lot of transformations are fake. I'm gonna take it to the floor for the next point. Don't worry, Dubai has very clean floors. Everything's cleaned all the time. The next point is that sleep is the most underrated part of your um, fitness journey. Um, sleep is actually the most important factor in your health. It should go sleep, nutrition, then exercise. Sleep is everything. You spend one third of your life sleeping. Your body recovers when you sleep physically and emotionally. It's also when your body kind of regulates its hormones as well, including ghrelin and leptin, which are the hunger and fullness hormones. And that's a huge factor, especially if you're dieting, to make sure that these hormones are regulated to help make your life easier when it comes to feeling satiated after meals. Humans need eight hours sleep. That is what the research says. If you think you're happy and comfortable and healthy, surviving under eight hours sleep, you're not, you're functioning. You're functioning at a lower capacity and you're just used to functioning at that lower capacity. So get your sleep. Actually, it was a little bit dirty and I got sand on my bum. <laughs> We're already at point number eight, which is that form and mind-muscle connection are so important and shouldn't be forgotten. So please don't just always aim for junk volume or lifting the heaviest weight possible, especially if you want a muscle growth. So for example, I'm gonna do a hip hinge. 
So in my hip hinge, which is the motion that we use in maybe good mornings and RDLs, you want the glutes and the hamstrings to fire depending on how you're performing this. As I'm doing this body weight, I can feel my glutes and I can feel my hamstrings firing up. So that's good. That means that the exercise is effective. So when you're performing a bent over row, a shoulder press, any exercise, make sure that you know what muscle it should be working <laughs> and make sure that you can feel that muscle working because otherwise you're probably going to lead yourself to injury and you're not going to make progress so please don't be silly and just think i'm going to pick this up and throw this weight around you need to do it with purpose number nine <laughs> is that rest is really important you shouldn't exercise every day exercising every day is highly likely to not get you very far especially if you are new to your fitness journey training seven days a week is probably going to be beneficial for like a seasoned athlete but for you and you come out to the gym your body needs between 24 to 48 hours to recover your muscles for example back in my days this is what i wish i knew i trained seven days a week when i started and um, my muscles didn't really grow i was very small <laughs> um, i would do so much junk volume and i would do maybe like 15 to 20 like leg exercises a week um, and I really didn't see much muscle growth I currently do about six to eight leg exercises per week and only train four times a week and see so much more progress so make sure that you rest I have returned home from the walk and I'm gonna finish off really quickly here because the construction work outside is so loud and I hate to be super cliche with this next point that I'm about to say but that is trust the process you have to trust the process um progress takes time getting stronger building habits literally it takes time and there's no instant gratification usually there's no instant gratification for getting yourself out of bed early for going to the gym to begin with it's so tough and it's just tough and tough and tough and tough it's really tough thinking about what meals to prepare doing the shopping making sure that you have the forethought to get all of these things done to meal prep to meal plan it's so much work for no results you only start to see the results a few months down the line when you've got these habits it's just second nature to you and then you notice your body feels incredible or you're seeing the physical progress in your body so trust the process thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it and if you are new to your fitness journey good luck good luck you've got this i hope that you don't make the same mistakes that i did if you need a little bit of guidance on what steps you should be taking to reach your goals i'd love to discuss it with you so drop me a dm on instagram or if you'd like to sign up with the wellness club coaching today we help women get so fit healthy strong and confident and the application form is in my bio so join us today and i'll see you in my next video bye